uh, the university fair was taking place in the gym at Moncton High School. And I was still, at this point, planning on a year uh, at Bible College. And so I remember going to the gym, and as I went into the gym at Moncton High, I looked down at the very far end, and there stood uh, at the table Seth Kroll, probably in his second or third year as registrar of, of ABC. Nobody was at his table. Nobody was talking to him. And so I felt a little bit sorry for him. And I thought, yeah, I mean, maybe we should go down and talk to him. At least he won't feel like he's all by himself and totally ignored. Uh, and so I went down and started talking to him. Well, the long and short of it was I, I ended up going to ABC that fall. As we kids uh, neared the end of high school, Dad had uh, always said that he would like us to have an opportunity to go to Bible college for a year of, of Bible. So I thought, I'll do my first year at ABC, and then I will um, transfer and go to another university. I was thinking maybe Mount Allison or something like that, and, uh, and finish my, my degree that way. But when I arrived at ABC uh, on September uh, of 19, what was that, 1982, um, I remember driving up on my Kawasaki 175 trail bike. It was actually Dad's, but I was using it. Um, and once I got there, in a very short time, I was snagged. In many ways, um, ABC was more like a family than it was like a school, both the good and the bad of family. Um, basically, uh, the faculty really cared about us. Uh, they wanted us to learn, they wanted us to grow in our faith. And uh, even though uh, I, had, I was living at home at the time, I actually spent more time, almost every waking hour, uh, out at ABC. Not just in classes, uh, in the library, but in the dorm, in the guys' dorm, hanging out with the guys. And so it was, it was a, a great experience. The women and men who helped mold me, um, Steve Dempster, Seth Kroll, Ralph Richardson, Carol Stanley Thorne, um, had no idea the crucial role that they would play in my life. It's those people that were very instrumental in helping me learn to, uh, learn to think uh, from a Christian worldview. In January of 1983, I was involved in a car accident, which would leave me a paraplegic. At the scene of the accident, as I returned to consciousness, I tried to get out of the car, and I realized that I couldn't move or feel my legs. After a few seconds, uh, a thought went clearly through my mind. This is probably permanent, so I'd better start getting used to it. I've never met anyone else that had that kind of an experience before. I believe this was God's miracle in my life. It was helping me to accept it so quickly and easily. Diane and I had dated off and on throughout high school. Um, and uh, she was in her last year of high school. Uh, and suddenly, both of us uh, were forced to deal with some very significant issues. At 18, you're really not necessarily ready to grapple with such things. Being a new paraplegic, first of all, I had to learn life in a wheelchair and what that meant. But I also began to realize that my brain and my academics were going to be much more important for me uh, now and it became my focus. I'd been uh, a decent student in high school, but suddenly I, I really had a whole different perspective on learning. After I finished at ABC, I was not sure exactly what form my ministry would take, and so I decided it would be a good idea for me to start by going to seminary. I went to Gordon-Conwell Seminary in Massachusetts. After graduating from Gordon-Conwell, I applied to Harvard to pursue a Master of Theology degree in Jewish and Greco-Roman backgrounds to the New Testament. In May 1990, I decided it might be a good idea for me to take a break from studying. And so I contacted Dr. Bob at ABC to see if there might be some part-time courses that I might be able to teach. He 
he asked if I could teach biblical studies and some, maybe some history courses as well. Uh, I hesitated a bit. Uh, and then I said, well, I could teach something in Reformation history, or I could teach something in Greco-Roman history, because I had the two courses that I had taken uh, related to that in seminary. Um, and then uh, he said, well, you might be able to do that. But he said, would you be uh, interested in teaching Renaissance history? And I kind of thought it for a second, and I said, uh, I've never studied the Renaissance. And Dr. Bob said, oh, that's okay, you'll be fine. He said, just read a couple of books on it this summer, and yeah, you'll be fine. And so uh, I began reading about the Renaissance, and that became the first course in my, that I would teach in my university teaching experience, Renaissance Europe. My goal in teaching was not to merely pass on information, but to develop learners, to take every thought captive through the preeminence of Christ, to explore the truth and the beauty of God's person and creation, and to exhibit to my students the joy of learning with humility. Uh, supervising students as they write their honors theses or their papers, senior seminars on the old campus, and uh, you know, hearing them helping them as they search out books and the time that I spent meeting with them, talking about what they're writing, working through their ideas, questions, etc. And most of all, helping them as they prepared for the presentation. In the process, it also had to be about the students and the relationships with them. I developed relationships with students, encouraging them and helping them to reach their potential. Without that focus on the students teaching, is hollow. In January 2020, uh, when my MS had fi finally begun making my work at Crandall more difficult, it began to affect my memory and my thought processing. And that, at that point, I began to realize that uh, it maybe it was time for a step back. And uh, on the downside, it meant that I had to leave uh, behind the students and my fellow faculty members uh, in the community at Crandall that had become uh, very uh, significant part of my life. The good thing is um, going on disability has allowed me to spend quality time um, with my parents. And uh, so uh, family's always been very important and uh, for us. We spent a lot of time together as a family, both growing up uh, and then later carried that through to my own family. Uh, one of the things in the family that was pretty significant was um, Dad's two favorite scripture passages. One was Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. The other was Pro uh, Matthew 6, 33. And that became kind of his life uh, direction. And uh, we saw it lived out at home. Uh, we saw it lived out in their lives. And uh, I think that was as important part of parenting as anything, just seeing that, that example and the faith that Mom and Dad had. And, when they went through tough times, they had, they had the faith to carry them through and um, still the same today. So we raised our children based on the template, if you would, <coughs> that our parents had left us. Di usually has been the one carrying the heavy end of the load, as moms so often are. Diane has been my strong and tireless par partner through the 36 years that we've been married. She supported me through all of my years of, of education and studying and research, first in Massachusetts, and then when we moved to Kingston. Uh, without question, family is so important. Uh, I'm very, very thankful for my family and the extended family, and I love them uh, very much. And uh, I am who I am today, uh, in large part because of them. Dennis, what a pleasure it is to have the opportunity tonight to be part of this event where we honor you as a distinguished alum of Crandall University. We're honoring you tonight really in two ways, Dennis. First of all, as a graduate of Atlantic Baptist College, 
who opened his heart to God and allowed God to use him in whatever way that the Lord saw fit. And the way the Lord saw fit is to bring you back here to teach and to have a distinguished career as an academic here at what is now Crandall University. For over 20 years, you and your colleague Dan were in essence the heartbeat of the history department here at the university. And we remember with great fondness how much you not only prepared yourself well, truly one of the most academically qualified graduates of this institution in its history. And you brought all of that back here and you invested in the next generation of students and you helped prepare them for graduate study and you helped them become all that they could be as a student here at the university. You brought good humor, joy and laughter to the classroom along with your excellent scholarship. Thank you for being a great alum and thank you as well for being a great faculty member at the university. May God continue to bless you wherever he leads and whatever he may do in your life. As far as legacy, the words of Steve Green's song, Find Us Faithful, pretty much says it all for me. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footsteps that we leave lead them to believe and the lives we live inspire them to obey. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. I hope that I've been perceived by students whom I've had the honor of teaching as much more than a purveyor of knowledge and facts. I hope that somehow I've been seen as a purveyor of truth, the life-changing truth of Christ, which enlivens everything we learn. Dr. Myron O'Brien had no idea when he became founding principal of UBBTS on the Salisbury Road in 1949, the hundreds of lives his step of faith would eventually impact for Jesus Christ. Neither did he know the impact that he would have on me in my life, an 18-year-old new paraplegic, uh, when he came to visit me in the hospital and sang his eyes on the sparrow with tears in his eyes. Yes, I've invested much in Crandall University, but Jesus has invested much more in me through Crandall University. Sole Deo Gloria. Without question, I can say that I am who I am today in large part because of ABC and the women and men who taught me and shaped me there. I'm so glad that I felt sorry for Seth that day in 1982 in the Moncton High School gym. <laughs>